Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and for the last few years I've come to call myself your gaming monk. Not out of arrogance, but as humility. Now, I've had this channel for many years, and it's only been in the last few that I felt it's really come into its own. Finally starting the Monastery podcast, expanding my reach with the reviews, and finding a ways to do live streams that is actually fun for me. In the spirit of that, I thought it appropriate to talk a bit about my future plans for this channel, and for the methodology for this temple known as the Monastery. Now originally when I started this, it was to review RPGs that I felt could use some more attention. I could have focused on D&D and Pathfinder as the trend, but I could not do that without losing my self-respect. The goal for me has always been to expand the hobby and show what else is out there, much like I try and expand my horizons with every other medium I happen to have a passion for. The Kickstarter Spotlight is just another incarnation of that. Now yes, I know about the many, 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 many failures that have put a black mark on the concept of crowdfunding. I don't dispute those, but Surgeon's Law dictates 95% of everything is crap, and I've seen enough successful crowdfunds to see that it can work, so I wanted to show exactly that. This showing what's out there is at the heart of Monastery Gaming. The closest I've done to a mainstream game in my gaming live streams has been Devil May Cry 5 and Sekiro, arguably. When I started the streams, I offhandedly said that if I ever started streaming Fortnite, somebody shoot me because I've clearly been replaced by a replicant. So often, I've seen streamers have a distant at best relationship with their audience. I understand why, but it's not something I wanted to do. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to do things my own way. This is where the nickname of my channel and server comes in, the open bar of the internet. I offhandedly joked once when I was in conversation with Doku and a few others, that if I ever made it big enough to go to something like TwitchCon, I'd be hosting tailgate parties outside the place instead of mingling with the other streamers. I stream first and foremost to have fun. Because after throwing darts at a wall over my confidence when it came to streaming, it's starting to become fun to get on and talk smack with all the people watching, or in the voice chat when I do that sort of thing. It's become a place for people of all walks of life, all political stripes, and all backgrounds and fandoms to come in, kick back, and relax. Recently, I got asked by a colleague of mine how I can possibly have right-wingers and ists and phobes at all on my podcast, as if that's some crime against live streaming. I answered, simple. I just call up a few friends and say, hey, you want to come laugh at idiots for a few hours and have drinks? It doesn't matter where you come from, the monastery can be the sanctuary for you, so long as you acknowledge its nature as neutral ground. This brings me to recent controversies, specifically the tribal stick fights that rose in the wake of the Vic Mignana case and all the fallout that ensued. So consider this a message to both parties, Kick Vic and I Stand With Vic. Several months ago, I set up a moratorium limiting talk on this matter, and I've done my best to keep that discussion out of my podcast. As I said in a previous iteration of Monastery Live, I will only rescind the moratorium when I am 100% confident that people are able to discuss the matter objectively with each other and with both sides. However, I haven't gone into why I established this moratorium. There's several reasons, and this was a very calculated and measured decision that I made. First, any stance that I take reflects on the monastery, as if the whole of my channel represents that tribe. So if I were to go with Kick Vic, my whole channel would be seen as a Kick Vic channel. If I were to go with I Stand With Vic, my whole channel would be seen as an I Stand With Vic channel. I cannot do that. Second, myself and the good brothers and sisters of this place are here to laugh at drama, not contribute to it. Third, I've seen channels and social media accounts that focus on it to the exclusion of all else, and I have no desire to fall into that trap of covering essentially the exact same story every week. Fourth, as I said, I have no confidence in people's ability to engage with their respective other side with objectivity, not resorting to smug dismissal, raised voice, or attacks upon character. I know some of you might claim that you're perfectly capable of doing so, but I don't have any confidence that can be seen through. Claims mean little to me in the face of actions. And finally, taking a side in the debate or allowing it to take stage would be a betrayal of the monastery's ethos. As I mentioned before, the open bar of the internet. It's not just a catchphrase, it's something that I try and hold to. The key word here is open. Now I do have my own opinions, and I follow people on both sides of the matter because I prefer staying informed. I stay informed in my own way, not in the way that's pre-approved by one tribe or the other. 
but maintaining professionalism comes first. Besides, so many want to talk about healing the rifts and uniting the community. I've opted to do just that, and I will not compromise what I've built to satisfy the whims of either tribe. The monastery is holy ground. And as we learned in the Highlander movie, you never fight on holy ground. So I have one final message to those who wave the banner of either side, whether they be kick or stand. You're welcome here, but your titles are not. I will not suffer anyone bringing their own moral crusades into my temple. When you come in, you're on the same level as everyone else. Now, I'm sure it could be argued that I take this too seriously, and I counter, if I don't take my own place too seriously, who will? With all that said, with all the serious stuff out of the way, where does this leave the future of the monastery? Well, I fully intend to continue the streams for video gaming in my usual fashion. This also applies to the tabletop RPG streams, which will continue to focus on games outside of the big two, as I have for the last four years. I also plan on doing unstreamed watch parties using cast or possibly watch together, to have some fun with everyone in a way that does not involve games. Once E3 comes along, I will be doing an E3 special like I did before. Reviews will continue, and I have a couple themed months in the pipeline for 2020. And while Characters with Character has no set schedule, I will continue that as well and expand it into other forms, like adapting shows, settings, and items into various role-playing games, because I want to bridge the gap between role-playing and things like anime and manga, since that was seen as taboo when I was starting out. As for Monastery Live, that will continue as long as there's enough interest, and enough stupid for us to laugh at. I've always enjoyed laughing at bad takes, going all the way back to laughing at terrible reviews that Game Informer was doing back in the day because, well, Minnesota. And the podcast is just an evolution of that. I hope you all have enjoyed the work I and the good brothers and sisters have put on this channel, because we're just getting started. So as I say at the end of every show, stay frosty, my good brothers and sisters. <laughs>